Be sure to check out my Amazon affiliate store where you'll find a lot of the tools that I use in my shop. You'll also find a brief description of the tool and what I think of it. You'll find a link to my Amazon store in the description of the video. I will be starting work on a new table that I recently designed. The table consists of unique looking tapered legs and a drawer box and drawer that rest on rails. The build videos will be broken into several videos and will be given away for free as well as the SketchUp file. And if you'd like to build the table along with me, you should be able to extract all of the dimensions for the build from the SketchUp file. You'll find a link to the SketchUp file in the description of the video below. And I hope that you all stick around for the entire build series for this one of a kind table. Anytime I work on a table, I always like to start with the legs first. And for those, I'm gonna use a piece of eight quarter cherry. With the freshly sawn face against the fence of the joiner, I'm gonna flatten one adjoining face before I take these over to the table saw and rip them square. I let all of my legs rest overnight. Now at the joiner, I'm gonna flatten and square two adjoining faces and the opposite two faces I'll take to their final thickness at the planer. Now is the time that I'll look at each face of the leg and I'll pick which face I want to have the joinery on because it's those faces that I like to have face jointed at the joiner. To help me keep it straight as to which face came off the joiner, I make an arrow pointing towards that face. So these two faces are square right off of the joiner and the opposite two faces I'll take down to their final thickness at the planer. Now that I have the legs dimensioned to thickness and length, I can start working on the rails. Now that I have these boards ripped to rough width and cut the rough length, I need to flatten one face at the joiner. And so that I can see my progress as I'm flattening at the joiner, I like to take a pencil and just scribble all over the face. That way I know that once all the pencil marks are gone, the board is completely flat. The next thing I need to do is lay out for joinery for my legs. Now, I was asked by my Patreon members if I would show my joinery layout process in an upcoming video. So I decided to use this video to show you guys how I do that. Now, the first step that I do is I take all of the faces that are gonna be adjoined through a rail. I have them facing up and I put a clamp on each one on each side and I make sure that the ends of the legs are nice and flush and I'll make a little tick mark where I want the rail to start. So now I need to make room for the tenon shoulder. And in this case, I have a half inch tenon shoulder. So I'll mark up a half inch from that first tick mark and I'll make another tick mark further up. So from this tick mark, I'll scratch a line all the way across to the remaining legs. So that'll be the start or the bottom part of the mortise. So in this case, the mortise is gonna come up an inch and a half and I'll have another half inch tenon shoulder on this side. In order to mark for the other end of the mortise, I'll take my rail and I'll put it on the first tick mark that I made and I'll make another tick mark for the other side of the rail. Now I'll measure down from this tick mark a half an inch for the tenon shoulder again. And then I'll subscribe a line from this tick mark all the way across and that will define my mortise. 
So these two lines will define the length of the mortise. So I still need to define the position of the mortise in this direction. So in this case, I'm gonna have the mortise exactly in the center. So I'll just use a digital caliper and I'll measure over from one end, one side of the leg on center and I'll make a mark. And then I'll use this mark to line up the router bit of my mortiser to make the mortise end to end in between these two lines. Now you could use a marking gauge and scratch a line on center from end to end of the mortise. But uh, in this case, because I'm using the horizontal mortiser, it's really not necessary. All I really need is this one point to line up the router bit of the mortiser. I'm gonna be using loose tenon joinery for this piece. So that means I need to make end grain mortises in all my rails. And because I know I want half inch tenon shoulders, I'm gonna use a half inch brass setup bar to mark the location of the mortise. Now these mortises will be on center across the width of the rail. The side rails are wider than the rails that are in the front and back of the piece. And that's because the side rails are gonna be later curved. So they're gonna be shaped later. So when I mark for the end grain mortises in the side rails, I'm gonna only use the brass setup bar and make a mark on one side of the rail. So these mortises are gonna be offset. So now I'll just measure for the length of the mortise and I'll make another mark and that'll define this mortise in the end grain. The side pieces are gonna be curved, and in order to cut those side pieces out successfully, I thought it would be best to make a template. So I print out the side pieces from my CAD file, and because the side piece is too long for the sheet of paper, I had to print out both one sheet for the left-hand side of the template and one sheet for the right side, and I just taped them together. Now I'm using a piece of quarter-inch thick plywood, and I cut close to the line at the bandsaw, and I'm gonna take it the rest of the way to the line using my belt sander. Now I'm gonna use 120 grit sandpaper for the belt, and I received this sandpaper from Craftsman Abrasives. And if you'd like to check out Craftsman Abrasives, you'll see a link in the description of this video below. And now that I have the template traced out, I can cut this out at the bandsaw staying close to the line. And now you can see why I have the mortise offset and it's not exactly in the center of the rail. With the side rails roughed out the bandsaw, I'm gonna take them the rest of the way to the line using the pattern and two router bits at the router table. I'm gonna use a combination of a pattern bit which has the bearing underneath the cutter 
and a flush trim bit, which has the bearing on top of the cutter. And when I'm routing out this piece using these two router bits, I'm gonna pay close attention to the grain direction of the piece because I always wanna be routing downhill or with the grain of the piece. For example, when I'm coming from this side of the piece, I wanna make sure that I'm routing this way. So I'm going downhill or with the grain. And to get the other side, I'm gonna to have to flip the workpiece over and switch router bits to come in from the other direction. So I'm always going downhill. I printed out the top of the post from my CAD file in order to get the curve. And I took this curve and I pasted it onto a piece of quarter inch thick plywood. And I cut out the curve at the bandsaw. And from this, I traced out the curve on top of all of the posts. And I cut close to the line at the bandsaw and I'll take it the rest of the way to the line using my belt sander. I have the base of the table out of the clamp. So the next thing I need to start working on is the drawer and the drawer box, which will sit on top of the base of the table.
For screws that you'd like to tighten by hand in really tight spaces, take a piece of scrap wood and drill an undersized hole for a drive bit. Then just pound the drive bit through, and then when you're done using it, you can just pound it back out. For the joinery for the drawer, I'm gonna use half-blind dovetails. And in order to make those dovetails, I'm gonna use my dovetail jig. I finished the table with a couple coats of General Finishes Armor Seal and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I like the look of this finish. Don't forget that you can get all of the dimensions that you need to build this table by downloading the free SketchUp file. And you'll find the link to the SketchUp file in the description of this video.